and one of the main things that people don't want to talk about. Yes, you see, I'm getting all physical over here. Hello, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Ashley, back with another video. Yes, honey, another video. The content keeps a rope. Thank you guys so much to the old subscribers, you know, to those who have newly subscribed to the channel, to everybody who has been supporting Broken Women Way TV and the podcast. As I always say, if you know someone who will benefit from these videos, if you are benefiting from these videos, make sure you share, 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 okay? And also subscribe, click that bell notification so you will be informed every time I upload a video. Now that we have the housekeeping out of the way, Let's get into the video. I hope it doesn't be too long, but we're gonna go on to see what the end gonna be, okay? So in today's video, and I'm looking down at my phone, of course, because I have my handy dandy notes here. Yes, with my little cute sparkly phone, ain't she cute, y'all? Okay, anyway, I'm getting off topic. So in this video, I want to discuss with you something I wish somebody else would have discussed with me, okay? Um, maybe they didn't discuss it with me because they didn't do it themselves and it's too painful to face, or maybe they didn't discuss it with me because they didn't know the depth of discussing it. Maybe it's just, you know, for such a time as this, maybe I'm just supposed to discuss it with you because it's my story and it's what I've gone through. So what I wanna to talk to you guys about today is the importance of looking deep before you leap into marriage. Okay, now, fellas, you guys, y'all can watch, okay? But I'm not a man, so I can only talk about the experiences that Ashley have gone through because Ashley is a woman, okay? So let me just talk to my ladies, okay? So ladies, a lot of times we get in relationships, you know, we meet someone new and we're like, oh my gosh, first couple weeks, oh my gosh, I can see myself with him for the rest of my life. And oh, he's so nice and he's so kind. But everybody has a honeymoon phase, okay? I'm a witness. I really believe that when you meet a lot of people in the beginning, people are gonna put their, their best foot forward. They're gonna put their best face forward, okay? So when you meet people in the beginning, you meet their representative. And the only thing that's gonna bring out who that person really is, is time and prayer. Time, situations, and prayer, let me say that. Um, in my situation, let me just talk about me, because y'all know I don't mind telling my business, honey, you know, it is what it is, because Ashley's going to always overcome the evil one, okay, by the blood of the lamb and the word of her testimony, and I don't ever want anybody to get my story wrong, okay, don't tell my story wrong, let me tell my own story, okay, because Ashley's going to give you all the low down and the good tea, it is what it is, okay, because I'm redeemed and it doesn't bother me, and I'm not ashamed, and I also want to help the next woman along the way, so I believe what I've gone through is not just for me. What I have encountered, what I've survived, what God has delivered me from is to help the next woman along the way. What kind of person would I be to hold in all of this stuff here that the Lord has delivered me from, the mistakes and the pitfalls that I've made, and I watch you walk into you know, a situation that's gonna devastate you? Mm -mm, won't be me, honey. So let me just talk about my life. So when I met my last husband, um, we met in December of 2018. And um, our relationship began to expedite very quickly, okay? I was uncomfortable with the speed. And I even told him, you know, a few times. I was like, hey, you know, I'm a little nervous. You know, are you sure? You sure? You know, because, um, you know, I don't want to go through another divorce. And it was always, oh, babe, you know, it's it, it's just fear. You know, you just, you're just just scared because you've been married before. And I'm, a, you know, I, I ain't scared. I'm not scared at all because he had been married previously as well. So he was like, I ain't worried, you know, I ain't scared, you know, I, I know I heard God, I know this is God, I know this is God, you know, but there was still like a little something in me that was like, eh, not necessarily no, but just hang on, okay, hold, hold on just a minute. So we met in December, um, thing, like I said, things moved like stupid fast. When I say stupid fast, I mean stupid fast. We met in December, got engaged in March, um, he set the wedding date, you know, my lease wasn't up at my apartment until November. And so he um, was like, oh, no, we're going to be married way before then. It was always, you know, you know we're we going to do this, we're going to do that. But when I would bring in my concerns, it was, oh, you just you just full of anxiety. you you just a person that has anxiety anyway. you you just worried, you know, for no apparent reason at all. It's just fear because you, you've you been, you know, divorced before and things have not gone right before. Well, uh, yeah, a lot of the reason 
was that. And then too, it was just something I could not quite, quite put my finger on. So whenever I would like voice my concerns or whatever, he would always say, oh, I know this is the Lord. Oh, it's the Lord. Oh, this is the Lord. This is the Lord. Well, clearly it turned out to be the Lord of the Rings, honey, because it, it couldn't have been the Lord that I serve that we were talking about. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. So, um, yeah, I was taking, you know, faster than what I would like to have been taken. Um, the only thing that gave me comfort, you know, at some point in time was the fact that he prayed with me every single day, like every day, every single day. Okay. And so, you know, I would always take my concerns, you know, to God and I would say, okay, Lord, this is, you know, what I'm concerned about. And, you know, whenever I would talk to him and try to voice my opinion and say, hey, this is what's worrying me, it will be, okay, well, let's just pray about it. He, just, he, just, he would just cut me off and say, let's just pray about it. Let's just pray about it. You know, so long story short, um, we ended up getting engaged and then uh, we got married. And I lied to you not. Like, it, it, things begin to shift at the ceremony. Okay. We had a foot washing, um, and as you know, anybody who's ever done a foot washing at a wedding, you know, you, both people, you know, you wash each other's feet as a um, symbolism of submission, you know, as the Bible says, to submit ye one to another, right? Okay, so he washed my foot, and you know, we were supposed to do both feet. You know, you're supposed to wash the feet, okay? Both of your feet. Well. He refused at the ceremony to allow me to wash the other foot. And I'm like, okay, people are watching. We're at the ceremony. Like, what's going on here? So I said, um, I need you to take your other shoe off. Just submit to me in this. And I was like, what in the world? And inside of me, like in my core, someone was like, girl, you done effed up. At that moment is when she knew she had effed up. That's exactly what I felt. But I said, okay, maybe it's just my fear. Maybe it's just my anxiety. Let me just push through. So we pushed through, ended up getting married. Um, the moment I set foot in the house as his wife and we moved in together, because as I said in a previous video, we didn't live together. So the moment I stepped foot in the house as his wife, everything shifted. All of this stuff that we said that we were going to do, all this Bible studying and praying together and you know, he was supposed to be finding a bigger, a bigger place for, you know, our family to be because it was he, and, you know, and I, and then his one child, and then my two kids, and we were all in a three bedroom, and one of the rooms he had turned into an office, and he refused, you know, to turn that room into another bedroom, you know, so my babies will have a whole room to sleep in, because my children have never not had their own room, okay? Never not had their own room. So I gave up my apartment, gave up everything that I had, you know, to move to Georgia to marry this man. And once again, like I said, things went too fast. Okay. So fast forward 2.5 months later in the marriage, he wants out. He wants a divorce. He don't want to be married anymore. And I'm in a whole nother state, no place to go. Credit not what it should be. You know what I'm saying? I had a place. When I was in Huntsville, I was fine where I was, you know, so I've given up everything that I have, little to no finances saved up, and I lost everything. But my car and my children and my little belongings that I had, okay? And so because I allowed somebody to take me faster and I didn't listen to the signs, I painted the red flags pink, but dazzled them out, you know, because I didn't listen to that inner voice that was telling me to hang on, slow down, you know, just just wait just a little while. And then there were even some people around that told me, hey, you know, won't you just kind of, you know, just, you know, just kind of pump the brakes a little bit, you know, don't, you know, go as fast. And and when I would, you know, voice my concern to him about it, it was, oh, they jealous of us. They just, you know, they, they're jealous. They just don't, you know, they, they just don't want us, you know, get married and all of this and that. And that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case. I had people that genuinely really, really cared about me and they knew that I had already been through two divorces and they didn't want me and my children, you know, to have to go through something else that was traumatic. And it turned out to be the biggest heartbreak ever. Why am I telling you all of this? I'm telling you this because I want you to take your time, get to know who you're getting to know because this man turned into somebody I don't know. To this day, I don't know who he is. I don't know who that person is because that's not the person that I fell in love with. I don't know 
who that person is, okay? So I'm telling you all of this to tell you it can be very detrimental to you financially. It can be detrimental to you, you know, mentally and emotionally and spiritually because it'll cause you to get in a place to where you just like, I just doubt God when it comes to every single thing, you know, and I lost a lot. I'm still trying to recover from that. Right now, I live with my mother and father in love. Yes, me and my children, I live with their grandparents, my kids' grandparents, which is still my family. But yeah, I'm still trying to get back on my feet one year later because I didn't slow down and take the time to get to know this person. So with that being said, you know, cause like I said, I don't mind telling my business. So, cause I know, Hey, the Lord is a redeemer of time and you know, he's going to blow me in my children's mind. And eventually we will have our own house. You know, he's going to give us what our hearts desire. And that's a stable environment. You know, my own place again, because I lost, like I said, I lost everything. I lost everything. I went from staying with this person, staying with that person, move, trying to stay here, prove a point. You know, then after everything happened, you know, I was in Georgia trying to prove a point. So I don't have to go nowhere. I don't want to leave. I don't have to leave and all this and that. And the Lord opened up the door to where I was able to get an apartment there. But financially, things were so tight and it was so hard for me to hang on to it. So I was forced to come back. So I'm back here you know, in Montgomery, just trying to just reposition myself and just literally like building from zero all the way back up. So I put some things together, some questions together that you should ask, you know, just from my experience, what I think you should ask a person before you decide that you are going to marry them. Because a lot of this stuff, you know, we talk and, you know, I thought I was asking the right questions, but a lot of things begin to come out after we got married. Okay. It's like, oh, I can just take my wig off and I can wipe off the eyebrow, honey. I can take my wig off and I can just be me. You know, that's how I felt, you know, he was doing. It's like, I literally felt like you did all of this stuff, you know, you, you played hard on the field to get me and then time we get married, you go sit on the bench. You know, so it's a lot of questions that you need to ask in depth and get a concrete answer before you move forward with someone. So a lot of the questions that I, I did ask him, it was, babe, I don't know. You, you you just gotta stop worrying. You know, I don't know. You don't need to stress about that. You need to stop worrying. You think about the wrong thing. But no, no, mm -mm, I wasn't thinking about the wrong thing and you ain't thinking about the wrong thing either. So if somebody's telling you that you asking too many questions, they're uncomfortable with the questions that you're asking. I'm not saying turn it into an interrogation session. I'm not saying ask a person 50 million questions all at one time because I didn't do that. You know what I'm saying? You spread the things out, you know, but you have open dialogue and they need to ask you questions too to get to know who you are. Because I mean, honestly, you know, it was confusing. It's like, how do I go from, oh, I know the Lord told me, this is what he was telling me. Oh, I know God, you know, gave you to me as my wife and you know, you got fear and it's everything that, that I would want and it, it's, it's how I want my daughter to be raised. So how did it go from that to, oh, I just I don't want to do this no more. You know what I'm saying? All based off of things that you said that you would do. And then when we got married, you decided that you didn't want to do that no more. Okay. So that's why I said time. Okay. Time situations and prayer is what reveal the heart of people. It will reveal their heart. So take your time. Don't rush. And here are a few questions I think, you know, that are important that you need to ask somebody. One of the first things you need to ask them is how were they raised? You know, it's a meme that's floating around that said, how were you raised off survival or love? How did your parents show love to you? Because if your parents ain't show you no love nine times out of 10, you're gonna have a hard time displaying that to your spouse, you know? So yeah, ask them, how did your parents show affection and love towards you, okay? So another thing that's important that you need to do is to make sure that people ain't just riding your coattail and they're not just with you, you know, because you benefit them. Now, a lot of times folks wanna be with you because they know that you have the anointing on your life. You know, they want to ride your coattail because you look good. You make them look good. And then you look good on paper. Girl, let me tell you something. Somebody can look good all day long on paper. But you got to be aware of people who only tell you the good things about themselves. Ask them what's wrong. So I asked them, I said, hey, look, I, I hear what you're saying. You know, you do your little gospel rap and all of this. And I hear you. Say that that's what you do. I hear you say that you're in ministry, which we still trying to figure out what he was in ministry doing. Because there was no license and no ordination nowhere. Okay. So I see that you said that you're in ministry and that you do this and that you do that, right? But what's wrong with you? What what's wrong with you? Because I can tell you what's wrong with me. Okay. I can tell you what my issues are. I can tell you what, 
you know, insecurities I have, if there are any insecurities that I have. You see what I'm saying? So you have to ask people, what's wrong with you? Like, no, what is really wrong with you? Not what's wrong with you as in being sarcastic, but no, you're telling me everything that's right with you. What's wrong with you? Are you insecure? Do you easily get frustrated? I'm telling you, that question alone of what's wrong with you is a loaded question. And you can get a lot of stuff out of people just telling you what's wrong with them. Okay, well, I was given vague answers. Once again, like, hey, I take some responsibility. I shouldn't even move forward with the mayor. Delving out all of this information to you and you giving me surface answers, you know? How are you with making decisions with your spouse? Are you just old school, headstrong, chauvinistic? What I say goes, do I not have a voice in this? Don't you want to have a voice? Now, if you want somebody going to do you like that, Godspeed, then you go ahead. But if you want to be with someone who has compassion, then you have to ask these questions. These are important questions, okay? What is your love language? I love the whole love language. It's like a little questionnaire, and at the end, it comes up with these scores, and it tells you, you know, what your love language is, and this is how I communicate. I think one of mine was uh, words of affirmation, and um, gifts was like at the, the very bottom. Okay, another question that you should ask. Okay, if we run into a hard patch, a rough patch, and we get stuck in our marriage, how do you feel about us going to um, counseling or having outside help? Some men don't like that. See, we get into these marriages and we think that it's gonna be all hunky-dory and you're not gonna have any issues. Baby teeth and tongue fall out. Everybody has issues. I'm not saying that you're gonna have issues that are just so devastating that you got to, you got to stay in counseling, no. But if there is a major issue that just so comes about, how do you feel about counseling? Cause mine didn't want to go to counseling. He wanted to do premarital counseling in the beginning because he wanted to get married so bad. For what I still do not understand. Okay, my dad was like, he just wanted to get married to sleep with me because I wouldn't give him no cookies before we got married. And so I don't know, maybe he just wanted to get in the cookie jar. I don't, I don't understand it. That's just crazy to me. For you to take somebody's whole family, marry them, and then throw them away because the heat in the kitchen got hot. Throw them away because people are holding you accountable because you didn't, you're not doing what you said you were supposed to do. My kids are not sleeping on no flow. My two boys, they're not sleeping in no twin bed. At the time, which was my daughter, who was a teenager, she ain't sleeping on no flow, on no broke down couch. But see, stuff like that, it didn't matter to him. So you have to ask these questions, okay? All right, how much alone time do you need? That's another one. I have to have my time to myself because I am a creative. Um, I'm not the type of woman who's gonna be in your pocket 24 hours of the day. However, I do want to be able to spend quality time you know, as husband and wife, yes. So is alone time important to you? That's how I recharge. I have to have time in the presence of God. I have to have my time creatively to be able to, you know, get my creativity wheel rolling. If I'm constantly around somebody or constantly doing something and I don't ever have any time to myself, I get agitated and frustrated. As she starts to feel a certain way, I have to have my time to myself. Everybody that knows me knows I don't mind spending time with my man, okay? I don't mind spending time together, you know, going places and doing things. However, I'm not the type of woman who's going to be in your back pocket all the time. That's just not me. I do communicate openly, you know, as far as me hounding or harassing you and want you up under me 24 hours of the day. No, baby, please go over there. I have to have my time to myself and I thoroughly enjoy my time to myself. Okay, so that's another one. Another question you need to ask is, what does your credit look like? I presented my credit report. He didn't even look at, oh, babe, well, I don't need to look at that. No, I need to see yours, though. Okay, I'm going to get it to you. Never did get it to me. Once again, I take responsibility with some of it. Hey, I shouldn't even move forward until I got this, this stuff that I wanted, that I needed to have to make me comfortable. Okay? What about debt? How, how do you want to handle debt? What do you do when you get paid? Do you go and get your little, you know, cigars and, and beers or whatever and smoke it all up? Do you give all of your money to the bill people when you got no food in the house? You have to ask these 
questions. And so I'm just glad that I've gone through what I've gone through so I can help the next person along the way. God knows I really am, honey, because some of this stuff, you know, I didn't even know until I went through it. And now I have the knowledge and I just want to share that knowledge with you guys. Another thing you need to find out is how does this person handle conflict? When you begin to talk about your feelings, do they consider you a nag? Do they gaslight you? Hmm? Do they gaslight you? Do they turn into a narcissistic cuckoo bird? Hmm? Do they bring out all of your insecurities and your issues that you have all while never addressing theirs? How do you handle conflict? Do you put like to put your hands up for? Because if I'm telling you, if you put your hands on me, it's going to be on the pot. I don't be want nobody to lay no hands on me like that. Okay? How do you handle conflict? Do you have buttons that are pushed? And do you warn people? If you know you have a temper, do you warn people? Hey, man, look at here. I ain't where, you know, I should be yet. So, look, I would rather you be as transparent with me as possible. Listen, before I moved, I had like this emotional breakdown before I moved to Georgia to marry him. And I was like, I'm not going. I'm going to unpack my stuff, all of this and that. I just had a breakdown because I'm like, you ain't going to come no way. And if you come, it's just not going to work. Something in me was just trying to just anchor me down and hold me down. And it was it's so crazy because it was like right before I had to go and take my paperwork to the leasing office to let them know that I was gone because I'm like, oh, my God. I literally am not going to have anywhere to stay. I got to be out of this place at this certain amount of time, right? And so... You know, I was like, look, I said, this is just not going to work. You know, let me just, just, just sit to myself, you know, cause I don't want me and my children to come down there and you don't, you mishandle us and we ain't got nowhere to live and all this now. Oh no, 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 that will never happen. I said, cause listen, I'm telling you, I said, if I get all the way down there and you mishandle me and my kids, it won't be good. I said that. I said, now it would do you best if you don't mean me and my children any good. To just say, hey, y'all, you know, this was cute in the beginning. It was fun. Changed my mind. I don't want to do it. I would have rather you did that than to get me down there. And then you mishandle me. Then I'm pregnant with our deceased child. And then I lose half of my mind. See what I'm saying? You have to ask people, how do you handle conflict? Also ask them, are there any boundaries that you want in place um, when it comes to having friends or associates of the opposite sex? I had a best friend that was a male. In every relationship that I've had, I'm like, hey, you know, my best friend is a guy. Are you okay with that? If you got a best friend that's a girl, how will I handle that? Am I secure enough to be okay with that? Or do I just not want you to have any friends of the opposite sex? There's something else that you need to ask. What are some expectations that you have about us spending our individual free time? Will you be mad if I go close myself off in the room all day long? Do you spend your free time with the scribbles? Do you spend your free time smoking and rolling dope? Do you spend your free time with your homeboys? How do you spend your free time? Am I okay with you spending your free time that way? Are you okay with me going to Hobby Lobby and staying in the Hobby Lobby for three hours? Because I can do that. That's my free time. How many emotional check-in conversations do you need? I remember... I would always want to have this open dialogue in my second marriage. So he drove truck, he was always on the road, he was never home. And so I would always ask, hey, you know, are you okay? Is there anything that you need from me? Something I'm not doing? Am I doing too much to aggravate? Just, you know, basic questions. You know, how's it going? How's life going by you? How's it going? And I remember the very last time I asked that question, it was, oh, I didn't jump down a rabbit hole and all of this and that, and then the marriage ended. So how are you, those questions that may bring emotional things to the surface that you may not be ready to deal with. There's something else you need to do. How do you handle your anger? When you get mad, do you punch holes in the walls? Do you grab objects and want to cut folks heads off? Do you throw knives? Do you punch people? Do you punch out glasses? Do you curse and scream obscenities? You know, what, how do you handle your anger? And what areas do you expect me to change in? I always tell people, when you get married and you say, I do, that means if this person is frozen in time for the rest of your life, that you are okay with them and you accept them the way they are, if they never, ever, ever change, okay? Are you okay with the person that you are dating to marry? Are you okay with the person that you are engaged to before you get married? Are you okay if the first significant other never, ever changes? Or were you like me? 
and thinking, oh, you know, we get married, it'll change. No, it only magnifies. No. Nine times out of 10, they're not going to change. The issues that you had when you were dating, they're gonna only be magnified when you are married. They're not going to change, honey. Another thing, are you quick to forgive and are you good at apologizing? Do you not apologize? Do you want me to apologize to you all the time for reacting for something that you did and I reacted a certain way and now I have to apologize to you for the way I reacted but you never apologized to me for what you did to cause me to react that way? Questions that you have to think about. You gotta ask about families now, okay? Especially if you have an extended family. What role would the extended families play in our lives, okay? Now, my children's father and I, of course, as you know, we're divorced. I'm living here with his parents and with the grandchildren, which are my children and his children as well. So being that this is my extended family, when I marry again, how are you going to feel about my family? Are you gonna feel some type of way? Because at the end of the day, this is still my family. How are you going to feel? Is it gonna make you feel insecure? You're not gonna to wanna to come around? Are you not gonna want me to come around? Because this is my ex-husband's parents? How are you gonna feel? Cause ain't nobody gonna stop me from hanging with my family, okay? Nobody's gonna stop me from hanging with my family. How are you gonna feel about my ex-husband? Because we have children together and, and maybe me and the new person don't have children together. How do you feel? I'm using this as an example because people be so sensitive, you know, when you throw questions out there, they be like, well, how is she going to ask me that? So I'm using myself as an example. How will you feel? Because at the end of the day, that's my children's father. And no man is going to stop my children's father from coming to see his children. Period. One of the biggest things that I dealt with in my last marriage was quality time. Okay. So the question is... So the question is, will you make quality time for us no matter how busy we get? That was one of the biggest things. This man ran and he did everything for everybody else, coaching basketball, you know, baseball, doing this, doing that. And marriage, me, the wife, was thrown on the back burner. No quality time together. Zero. That's one of the main reasons why the marriage is over now. No quality time together. How do you feel about quality time? Your marriage is your first ministry. You got to make sure your house is in order before you try to go and, and minister and talk to anybody. But sometimes people are so good at pretending and faking, you know, they get away with it because nobody holds them accountable because they, people can't see through their BS. But see me over here on this end, babe, I'm blowing the horn. I'm blowing the whistle. I'm blowing the whistle. The important is your faith and your spirituality to you. When I would go off and spend time to myself, you know, it would be knocks on the doors and, you know, you're looking scared and peeping all over the place trying to figure out what I'm doing. And, hey, what you doing in here? I'm spending time with the Lord. What do you mean? I'm writing in my prayer journal. I'm reading my Bible. got my worship music playing. I'm spending time with the Lord. And it was, oh, okay. You know, just always, you know, looking scared. And I had to tell him at one point, I said, look, I said, I don't know what you really thought I was when you married me but I have a real standing relationship with the Lord and I have to have, once again, my quality time with God. This ain't no faking. This ain't no showboating, what the old folks like to say. So if it's important to you for you to have to spend time alone in the presence of God, you need to be married to somebody who needs to spend time alone in the presence of God as well because they're not gonna understand that. It's one thing for you to say it, but for you to actually do it, People not they ain't gonna understand that unless they actually do it as well. How important is it to you to keep up your physical appearance? Do you want me walking around looking like this right here all day long, honey? Is this what you desire? You gotta ask them. Is this what you desire? Do you want me to look like this every day when I wake up? Cause guess what, I don't. Okay, I don't look like this every day. All right, these lashes come off, this, these these locks be down, honey. The jury be gone, the makeup be off. Yes, now your girl will be her face asleep. Y'all know that. But is it important to you that I look a certain way? Is it important to you that I stay within a certain size, weight-wise? What's important to you? What things are you not prepared to give up in the marriage? I'm just gonna let that stay right there. I'm not gonna get into no whole deep super speed. Do you have to always be right all the time? Is there no compromise? And because you're so used to doing things your own way, are you not 
willing to compromise at all. If you have a family, you have children, how will you balance the holidays? You know, even if you don't have kids, you know, I remember when I got married the first time, you know, we had to figure out when we were going through premarital counseling, we had to figure out how are we going to spend our holidays. We didn't stick to it the way we should have. But um, how will you spend your holidays? Will you be creating your own memories? Or will you go here one year? Or will you go here the next year? Will they come to you? That's important things that you have to ask. You don't, you don't wait and figure these things out after you got married. How important do you think self-care is? Have you ever cheated on anyone? Or have you ever been cheated on? Do you still have insecurities about that? What are your fears when it comes to relationships and it comes to marriage? Conflict arises. Do you want to fight? Do you want to avoid the conflict? Do you want to talk it through? Do you want to go through counseling? Do you want any more children? And if you do, how many do you want? And one of the main things that people don't want to talk about, yes, you see I'm getting all physical over here. But one of the main things that people do not want to talk about in marriage they don't want to talk about that bedroom. When I say talk about the bedroom, I'm talking about discussion. Are you comfortable with having discussion regarding sexual needs, regarding sexual preference? What is your drive? What's your appetite? Okay. Do you have to go seven days a week? Is your libido in the pit of hell? Are you kind of like, you know, in between, you know? Are there certain things that you just do not want to do? Certain things that you just won't do because you consider them deal breakers. Listen, you can still be saved. You can still have a standing relationship with the Lord. You can still keep your hymen intact if your hymen is intact. Or you can still continue to remain abstinent and ask these questions. Because if you have already had sex, then you already know what your drive is. If your drive is through the roof, then don't you think you need to kind of be with somebody who can kind of meet you beyond the middle? Okay? I'm talking about way beyond the middle. And you got to pray and hope that these people will be open and transparent. You got to pray that these people will keep it hot with you. Will keep it honest, open, and transparent. Because that's the only way that this will work. Is if you are transparent, they are transparent, you allow time to teach you who these people really are and show you who these people really are and you allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to you when you should move and when you should wait. There may be some times where he's not saying no, he's just saying not right now. There may be some times he's just saying just hold off just a minute. You know, ask him too, are you clean? How do you clean up? Do you got black rings in your toilet? Okay, is your kitchen nasty? Is it pubic hair in your kitchen? This has happened to me before. Not in my kitchen. But I was dating somebody and they had the public house, honey. It was all over the stove in the kitchen. Look, look. I don't know if you were scratching while you was cooking or what was going on. But I remember that. How clean are you? Are you a neat freak? Do you, do you have to have things a certain specific way? Do you go to sleep with the TV on? Do you chew with your mouth open? Are you friendly? Are you cordial? Are you approachable? It's a lot of stuff, honey that people need to be digging into to try to get to know a person and allow that time to smooth it all out. Do you like to read? I'm a writer, so if I'm writing some information and I give you this information to read it and you don't like to read, are you gonna get frustrated because you don't like to read? Are you a liar? Do you have a problem telling half truths, which makes you a whole liar? It's a lot of questions to be asked, y'all. It's a whole lot of, I could go on and 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 on again. How often do you bathe? Have you been tested for any STDs? Do you have any STDs that you know of that you're hiding from me? Have you ever been with the same sex or has the same sex ever been with you? See, it's a lot of stuff that you have to ask before just seeing somebody and you say, oh, we just look so good together. Then y'all go on ring shopping and then you're married and then you end up looking like, what just happened here? Is divorce an option for you? How do you feel about divorce? When you get mad and frustrated, is that the first thing that comes to your mind is divorce? You want divorce, you want divorce, you want divorce? Or do you want to work through it? Are you a keeper of your word? Are you truthful? How often do you pray? Do you pray with your spouse? Do you pray out loud? I put myself on blast so I can help the next person along the way. So 
So that's it. Like I said, I could go on and on and on in this video and I just refuse. I'm just gonna stop right here because it's already super long already. It's already about 40 minutes long now. But thank you guys so, so, so much for listening to what your girl has to say. My whole purpose is to help somebody else along the way. <laughs>